Hi there! It's Florence here and I am back with another, I think, the 10th episode of my knitting podcast. Today I have, I think, three finished objects to show, about four work in progresses, and a couple of new yarn bits and pieces to show as well. As usual, I will start off with what I'm wearing. This is the step-by-step -step sweater, it is my own design, and this is available as a free pattern on my Ravelry, it will be linked in the description. On top of that there is also a video on my YouTube channel um, from summer of last year I suppose, where I show how to make this jumper in a lot of detail step by step. It's designed to be a sort of first pattern for a beginner to try if they've never knitted a garment before, but there are also options for short row neck shaping and things, so it's quite a good free pattern for a raglan jumper for a more experienced knitter too. I have two of them, I wear them both all the time. Um, this is the sort of more beginner friendly version where I use an affordable yarn, this is knitted in Drops Nepal, and there's no short row neck shaping. So it doesn't fit quite as well, but it's very easy to knit. As you can see, I am back in my tiny cupboard of a uni room. You can see how high the ceiling is. Um, definitely a big change from being at home, but I do have to film the occasional episode here because this is where I live during term time, I suppose. So I won't talk anymore and we'll just get straight into my finished objects. So this is probably the biggest thing that I've finished over the past few weeks. It is an accessory, but it's not accessory sized. This is a solid jumper's worth of knitting. This is a scarf which I've been showing on my podcast pretty regularly for quite a few months now. I believe I started it back in October, um, but it didn't actually take that long in terms of hours spent knitting on it, it just took a long time because I was sort of keeping it as a project when I couldn't work on other things. It is basically a big stockinette tube so it was really great for car knitting, knit night knitting, anything like that where I didn't want to have to be checking a pattern or I didn't want to be thinking too much about what I was doing, I could just work on this. Now I've heard that scarves are supposed to be about as long as you are tall, I'm about 164 centimetres tall I think. This scarf is roughly my height, it might be a tiny bit longer, but I still feel like it's a little bit of a short scarf. So as you can see, I can put it over my shoulder like that and it goes down nicely. In order to stop it from unraveling, normally I've been wrapping this end round and tucking it in. So it's definitely long enough to wear, but I still feel it's shorter than some other scarves. I do have a little bit of yarn left, so I could probably add another 20 centimetres or so to it, and I might. But to be honest, we were entering a cold snap and I just really wanted a scarf to wear. And so I sat down one day, just knitted on it for a few hours and then went, right, at the end of today, that's how long the scarf is going to end up and I will bind it off. I will be releasing a pattern for this. I'm just going to stick it up for free on my Ravelry because there's nothing especially complicated here. But I think it's a really good use of some quite special yarn that you care a lot about and you want to make into something that you're going to wear a lot with different outfits and especially very soft yarns that you want to feel close to your neck. This is made of very special yarn, um, it's made of two strands held together. The main strand is a fingering weight cashmere, it's cashmere yarn from Skull Studio. They are a clothing brand rather than a yarn brand, but they do sell uh, a couple of different yarns. The cashmere just comes in a brown or a grey and I got the brown colour. In order to make it wear a little better, um, and also in order to be able to knit it up a little bit faster at a bit of a larger gauge, I did hold it with a strand of silk mohair and I went for knitting for olive because, well, they have really lovely colours. Um, the mohair is pretty soft, I find. This is the colour Bark, which is quite a nice match. It looks almost a tiny bit mild, but the colours are quite close. I don't find it makes the overall scarf scratchy or anything, like it still reads as a cashmere scarf, you know? Overall I'm very happy with it, um, maybe I will unpick the end and add an extra few centimetres, but honestly I might not, I've been wearing it a lot and I've been really enjoying it. I also did finish a pair of socks. These socks were a work in progress in the last episode I think. They are the Komarebi socks by Yuka. I've mentioned before that I really like Yuka's patterns, I think that they're really beautiful, they come in a wide variety of constructions and they're very well written and well explained. The only downside to me is the sizing I find comes up a little bit tight. Like a lot of them are supposed to be knitted on 2mm needles and I always use 2.25mm needles and I always knit the largest size and yet I still sometimes have a hard time getting them on and my gauge isn't especially tight. 
Anyway, these are the tightest pair I've made so far. Um, I did make the bigger size, I think this one may only have come in two sizes. And they have this amazing all over lace. It's a sort of leaf pattern that continues all the way up to the end of the toe, so there's no plain toe. They are knitted toe up and they have a slipped stitch heel. Um, this is, I think, an eye of partridge heel. Overall, I think that they're really, really beautiful. The one thing I will say about this pattern is it's potentially not the most beginner friendly pattern that Yuka has released. Definitely requires a little bit of thought to get your head around the charts. I'm not saying the lace itself is hard, like it doesn't use any complicated techniques, but just um, figuring out how to work the charts on the sock itself. I wouldn't say it's the best design for beginners. The yarn that I use for this is Sisu from Sandless Yarn. Off the top of my head, I don't remember the colour. Sandless Yarn generally describe their yarns by colour numbers rather than colour names, which I always find much harder to remember. I think a lot of the yarn does have colour names, but it's not generally marketed with them, um, so I never know what they are. I don't remember off the top of my head whether it's a 75-25 or an 80-20, but it's a wool nylon blend sock yarn. Very standard, quite affordable, the colour selection was really nice. This is definitely a little bit more of a vibrant colour than I would usually go for, but I do think it's really pretty. I haven't worn them too much so far, um, because I wanted them to look nice enough to show in this video, but they do feel like they will wear quite well. Like, this is a pair that I won't be afraid to put inside my Dot Martens, so we will see how they hold up, um, but I'm putting them into my, like, pile of hard-wearing socks rather than my pile of soft, fancy house socks. Overall, lovely pattern. Um, very lovely yarn, and I do recommend both. I do feel like I'm speeding through these finished objects, but I don't have very much to say about each of them. They're all quite simple. I don't know how much I mentioned this in my previous videos. Um, for my sister and her boyfriend for Christmas, I got them yarn and a pattern to make the petite knit Oslo hat. My sister had mentioned that they both wanted to knit, and that they both wanted hats, and so I thought it would be quite a nice gift, so I got my sister some Filcolana Telia and Filcolana Arvetta in like a teal colour, and I got her boyfriend two strands of dark grey Arvetta to knit the hat. Anyway, I ended up kind of wanting one myself too, um, and I also wanted to make one with my boyfriend, and so that is what this is. This is the Oslo hat by Petite Knit, knitted in one strand of Double Sunday by Sandness Garn. The shade I think is called Into the Woods and I believe it is one of the like petite knit collaboration special colours of Double Sunday. It is a really lovely colour. I'm not sure how well it's showing up on camera, I feel like it looks almost black, but it's definitely a dark olive green. I have a pair of Lululemon leggings in the shade Dark Olive and they are a perfect match for this. Um, when I went rowing it took a lot of willpower to resist um, taking this hatch to match my leggings in the boat on a really cold morning, but I didn't want to hurt the hat since it is not mine. I have already gifted it to my boyfriend and so I had to sort of steal it back from him just for today to show it in this video, but he has been wearing it like all the time and he's not really a hat person, I don't think I'd ever seen him wearing a hat prior to giving this to him, and now every time I see him he's wearing this hat, so it seems to be going down very well. When I make a gift for somebody like that where I know it's not an item that they'd necessarily wear, I don't want them to feel like there's pressure on them to wear it, like I'm making them a gift because I want to make it for them, and I understand they may not appreciate it as much as I would like them to because I put a lot of time and effort into it and they didn't really ask for it, but he really does seem to like it. I do want to make myself one, I don't know if I'm going to have time this winter, but I do have the yarn for it, I've definitely showed that in a previous video I think. I have Sunday and Tim Silk My Hair from Sandless Garn, both in the colour 1015? I think it's called Kit. It's really beautiful. This yarn I have not used before. I've used Sunday from Sandness Garn quite a few times, but this was my first time using the Double Sunday. I was really struck by how nice it feels. Like, I've only really used Sunday for small projects as well, um, and so I haven't really knitted a bunch of it and stuck it out like I've always held it with my hair, so I haven't really been able to feel what it's like. But this being just one strand of the Double Sunday and this it up at a DK gauge, um, it really does have a lovely texture. Like it's completely non-scratchy, so I think it's great for gifts for people who might be a little bit more sensitive to scratchy wool. And it just looks beautiful, like the stitch definition is lovely. I am obsessed with this. And when I was knitting it, I was knitting it up when I was at my family home over Christmas, my dad kept picking it up and being like, 
or I really want one of these, like, do you think I could knit one of these? My dad has never knitted before, and I don't think he especially wants to, but he was like, how much does that yarn cost? He was chatting to me about it, he'd like priced up the yarn, he was talking about the colour he wanted, he was like, honestly, I don't like any of the colours that Sadness Garn do, but the petite knit colours. So I think he really wants one in like a vibrant red orange. I might make one for him for his birthday, even though his birthday is in May, so a little bit out of season. I think he'd still really appreciate it. I made him a hat a couple of years ago and it hasn't worn brilliantly, it was just with drops yarn. So I might treat him to one of these using this really beautiful Monsi Port Merino because I think he would really like it. I made, I believe, the second largest size. I think it's the adult women's size. It fits me well and it fits my boyfriend well as well. I bought three skeins of the Double Sunday and I didn't start using the third one. Like I almost did, but I used maybe like 1.9 skeins. This was, I think, because it isn't quite as long as it's supposed to be. I didn't make the folded brim quite as long as it needs to be. Maybe it's like one centimetre or half a centimetre shorter. But also when I was doing the decrease on the top, I specifically really don't like those hats where there's a lot of room above your head, below the fabric of the hat, like where it's roomy on top. I don't like that look. Just a personal preference, which obviously I need to inflict on my boyfriend too. And so I kept putting it on his head and like looking at it. <laughs> and as I was doing the decreases, I realised that if I did them exactly as written in the pattern, it would end up having a little bit too much room at the top for my taste. You can see that when you look at pictures of the finished hat, it's beautiful, but it wasn't quite what I was going for. So I ended up speeding up the decreases. So the decreases, you start off doing them every alternate row, and then you move on to doing them every row. And all that I did differently is I started doing them every row just slightly earlier. So yes, that's why I use slightly less yarn. And it's also why the hat doesn't sort of lay flat very nicely, because like the shape on the top is very flat. Anyway, I think it looks really nice on. I will risk squishing my hair to try it on for you. It looks so stupid with my fluffy hair under the hat, but uh, yes, as you can see, it's not got much space here, just a tiny bit. Um, the folded brim is really nice, and I think it fits well. Is the hair fixed? It's a cute hat, I love the pattern, and my mum's knitting one right now, my sister and her boyfriend are going to make them, I'm going to make one for myself. The whole family are going to have these hats by next winter, I'm sure of it. The big winner is the yarn, though, this yarn is just amazing and I totally want to make a jumper out of it so if you have a sort of recommended jumper pattern you think I should make which would work with this yarn I mean it's very versatile it's a DK weight merino um, let me know if you have any recommended patterns that I might be interested in trying out okay so I'm moving on to my work in progress pieces and this first one is um, going to be the first because it's kind of a fusion between a finished object and a work in progress piece because it's a set of two items one of which is done and one of which isn't so I had some Sadness Garn Piggin left over from my Moby sweater. Actually, this is going to be a minor tangent, but my Moby sweater, as I've worn it and the cables have spread out, I'll get it one second. Please ignore the fact I've got lipstick on the collar of it. As I've been wearing it, um, I had a hard time blocking out these cables on the sleeves because they're sort of on the top edge of the sleeve. So if you're blocking the sleeve flat, it's really hard to stretch these cables open because, you know, cable like rib has a tendency to suck in and this was a challenge to block. So as I've worn it, it's been starting to gradually open out, you know, like when you make a ribbed camisole and you're wearing it and the rib opens out and it becomes less fitted, that kind of thing. And as that's happened, I think the sleeve has become shorter, like as it opens up this way, it naturally is going to contract a bit this way. So the sleeves aren't too short for me, but they definitely are more like this rather than like this, which is what I prefer, right? Like I let my sleeves to go over the bottom part of my hand. Please ignore how much this jumper is pilling. I have misplaced my jumper shaver. So what I thought I might do, I don't know if I'm going to do it soon or over the holidays, maybe over Easter, is I want to do a jumper surgery video. I'm going to collect up all of my finished objects that have something wrong with them that bothers me. This is probably like currently my most worn jumper, short sleeves or no short sleeves, but there's this, there's that backless jumper that I never wear because it is too short for me. Various pieces like that. And I want to do a video where instead of making new objects, I sit down and like cut and improve pieces that don't quite work for me. So for this, I would lengthen the sleeves and maybe the body a little bit too if I have the yarn left over for it. And I also want to just like chop that backless jumper in half and um, 
add a little bit of length and then seam the two halves back together again because I'm not going to go into depth on that now, I shouldn't, it would be too much of a tangent. But I think that would be a really fun video idea and also sort of fits my philosophy of rather than constantly producing new things I should try and work with the things I have first. I could also add the extra length that I want onto that scarf. Yeah, so I had some yarn left over from that but actually I probably shouldn't be using it because I do have other stuff that I want to do with it. But here I am using it anyway. I really wanted to make some little pouches to go inside my bag. I got a new bag for uni and it is massive. It can literally hold everything, I love it. But if I'm putting a lot of small items inside that bag they have a tendency to rattle around and go missing and it doesn't have a lot of pockets on it so I wanted to have some nice zip up or like drawstring pouches that I can keep inside my bag to sort the small items so I can easily find what I need. So I made this one first, um, it has a really simple slip stitch pattern, I cord around the top, a zip, I haven't sewed in a lining yet, I do need to do that. You can see what the stitch pattern looks like, it's very pretty. This is the tweed colour that I use for the Moby sweater, and then I don't remember the name of the brown, but as usual all the yarn colours will be listed in the description. I figured I should write up a little pattern for this, um, but it somehow felt incomplete just writing a pattern for this, even if I do the maths on different sizes and include those for people who want a slightly larger one, a pencil case or a makeup bag or whatever, it still felt like not enough, and so I thought I'd try and do a completely different style of pouch as well, so that the pattern would have instructions for two different styles. So this one is in progress, but this one is going to be like a drawstring kind of pouch. I put some sock yarn through the drawstring bit so I can like pull it closed to see how it looks, and I think it looks pretty cute. I will put some eye cord through eventually though. I'm doing it top down, um, that made the most sense to me, and it will have a round base when I get to it. Other than that it's the same stitch pattern and I think it will be really cute and it also works out really quickly. So I think I will make a pattern for these, maybe add some different sizes in because I know some people want them as small project bags or makeup bags or generally things which require a little bit more capacity than those little tiny ones I've done, and I will be having those tested pretty soon. Look at my ball of yarn, isn't it the tiniest and cutest thing ever? I am now going to move on to the biggest work in progress in this video, which I'm sure is going to be sort of the main focus of my knitting for the next month or two. It's a big one. Also before I get too into it I should say that the yarn for this project is sponsored. I did not pay for it, it wasn't sent to me because I'm like a podcaster or anything, it was sent to me by the designer to test knit this item, so it's a yarn supported test knit. This is... I know I said I wasn't going to do test knits and that I always regret it, but here I am and I got too drawn in by this one because it just excited me so much. I am test knitting the Mamba dress I believe it's called by Ullen Knitwear. This is a turtleneck dress, I know deja vu I just cast off my last turtleneck dress and here I go again. It comes in three lengths, mini, midi and maxi, and it's knitted at like a DK-ish kind of gauge, like a tight DK gauge. It has cables all over. Look at these cute little squiggly cables. So cool. And it is knitted from the bottom up. I really wanted the midi length, like I thought this dress would be so cute in a midi length because it's not as fitted as the dress I just finished. Like it's snug maybe. Um, but it doesn't have a lot of shaping in it, like it's kind of a straight up and down thing. So I really thought it would be cute as a midi dress, like embracing the whole boxy thing and just going boxy from head to mid calf. But the trouble is, I'm at uni, this is going to be a really tough term for me, I have my big project on the go, I'm writing so much code, I'm doing so many example sheets. I just do not have the time, I don't think, to knit a midi dress to a deadline, and so I'm doing the mini version. My concern, however, is that I'm not going to have the yarn to finish this. The yarn that I was sent for this project is from Izia. I never know how to pronounce this brand. Izia, Izaga, whatever it is. This is Alpaca 2, which is a fingering weight 50-50 alpaca and wool blend. And then we could choose which yarn we wanted, like if you wanted to do it with the lace weight alpaca, um, you could do that. Some people have got different main strands as well, I think. But I went for the Alpaca 2 held with silk mohair. 
I've heard a lot of good things about the Izzyus Silk Mohair and so I really wanted to try it and let me tell you it does not disappoint at all. Like I think I can say with confidence that this is the softest mohair that I have ever touched and that it feels significantly nicer than any other mohair that I've tried. Yes, even the Knitting for Olive. I feel like Izzy I might end up having a little bit of a chokehold on me after I finish this test net and it was probably very financially justified to send me some of this yarn for free because I feel like I'm going to end up buying a bunch for a lot of my future projects. I was sent five of this one, 250 meters each, and six of these at 212 meters each. So, you know, I have a bit over 1200 meters of yarn in total. The trouble is I got 13 centimeters, I think, of this dress knitted with the first ball of mohair. And so when I run those numbers in my head, um, I'm going to run out of yarn just after I divide the front and back. And this dress is supposed to have long sleeves. So I'm not sure I'm going to have enough for the turtleneck, let alone the sleeves. And so I am going to have to end up spending a bunch of money on additional yarn. I am test knitting the size extra small, I think. It's supposed to have a little bit of positive ease, like six centimeters, I think. I'm also amazed at how lightweight this feels. Like I was expecting it to be more dense and more heavy, but the main strand is really thin, like it's fingering weight, but I would say it's a light fingering weight, which I wasn't really expecting. And so even held with the mohair, it's not producing the densest fabric ever, even on a four millimeter needle. Like especially compared to my scarf, which was also fingering weight in mohair, and that was on a 4.5 mil needle, and that felt like thicker than this. I'm very close to gauge. I think I'm like one stitch off gauge. So that might be why I'm using the yarn up slightly faster than I should be. But it didn't feel like enough for me to want to change needle size. I did swatch like a good test knitter for this one. But yeah, I only started this two days ago. I have a nice little chunk of it done. The cables are really fun to knit. They don't require you to have the charts in front of you or whatever. You can just read them and then put the pattern away and you should be fine. And they're all really small cables, like two, two left cross or two two right cross, is that what they're called? I don't know a lot about cables. So you don't need a cable needle for any of them and without a cable needle you're still not stressing that you're going to drop stitches or anything like that. Yeah I really like it, it's a really nice balance between cables and stockinettes in it so I found it really enjoyable. I just don't love the fact that it's bottom up because I find that when things are bottom up, firstly, even if I do end up having to buy extra yarn it's going to be really hard to judge how much I have to buy because I can't just sort of carry on until I run out or whatever with it being bottom up. I have to actually get the right amount. I mean, to be honest, when I'm putting so much beautiful yarn into this project, I should probably really try to make sure that it's perfect and exactly the length I want. So I should make sure I just buy enough because having leftover of this lovely stuff is not the end of the world. But also I just don't like the cast on process of having to cast on so many hundreds of stitches and then join in the round, like without twisting it. I just find it stressful. Anyway, we're past that point now. I'm loving this, like it's just so addictive to knit. I've barely put it down. I have not been doing my work the last day or two because I've been so excited about knitting on this and I hope you guys are excited for the pattern release too. I can't wait to show you how it turns out. As always, I have a sock. This sock is almost finished, but it's a ribbed sock, so I can't really show you how it's going to look. I wonder if I can put it on a sock blocker. I don't know how many of you guys are following my sock blocker fiasco, I managed to lose my sock blocker like last year and by lose I mean I left it in my uni room um, by accident and it got thrown out because they thought it was rubbish. No abuse fault of course. And so I was like making do with a sock blocker that I made out of a cardboard box for the longest time but I finally decided to just suck it up and pay for a new sock blocker and so I have a metal one now. I really wanted a plain metal one that wasn't green and I really wanted one with a hook on the top. Those are both details that I really appreciate, but this is passable, I guess. Hopefully you can see it much better now that it's on the blocker. It has this cool twisted rib ribbing that goes all the way to the toe, and then this twisted rib moss stitch. This pattern is called Juniper, and it's an older pattern by, you guessed it, Yuka. If you've watched my podcast before, you would know that I am on a mission to try every sort of commercially available sock yarn. Well, not all of them, but I really am running out of like common ones to buy because I've tried most of them and I'm going to make reviews of all of them when I'm done. And the one that I'm using for this sock is the heavily recommended Cascade Heritage Solids. 
Now this colour is amazing, I don't think it will completely show up on camera, but the colour is called Lunar Rock. It's somewhere between a white, a grey, and like a teal colour. Like, it's very blue and icy. It's just such a unique shade, I've never really seen it before. And when I was ordering it, you see all the colours on like the Wool Warehouse website, and it's overwhelming, and you can't really tell how they're going to look when you actually get the yarn. Um, so I was so happy with this. Like, I was expecting more of a grey, but the blue colour is just so beautiful. Can you see that? I don't know. This is, I think, 7525, but it is Superwash Merino based. So it's a lot softer than some of the other wool based sock yarns that I've used. I always get a little bit nervous about the wear on merino sock yarn, but also I've never like worn through a pair of merino socks, so maybe that concern isn't entirely justified. It feels very similar to Fulcana Arvetta in texture, if you've used that, but it's got a little bit more of a sort of round shape to it. I like it a lot, and the colour selection is just unmatched, it is amazing. It's quite cheap too. So yeah, this sock is going to just continue with the moss stitch a little bit further, and then it has a contrast sort of top edge bind off. So I have some really vibrant blue sock yarn that I'm going to use to do the top edge, um, just to add a little bit of interest to it, because it is a very plain sock just with the ribbing and the little bits of moss stitch. I literally think I have like one hour left on this sock before it's finished, maybe two hours. I was netting on it a lot because I wanted to keep my needles free from big projects so that I could start the test knit as soon as the yarn arrived, and so I was working on this while I was waiting for it. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to work on it very much because I have another small project that I am going to have to prioritise, because this one is going to be a birthday present. I mentioned before that after I made my mum a pair of cashmere gloves for Christmas, my sister asked me specifically if she could have a pair of fingerless gloves for her birthday, and so that is what I'm currently working on. Her birthday is February 23rd, so I have about a month to make it, but that's on top of uni work and this huge test knit, so it is going to be a bit of a push. I'm making the penny gloves by Petit Knit. The reason why I chose that rather than my own cables glove pattern that I'm currently working on is just because I wanted to use more of an interesting yarn. My sister wears a lot more colour and interesting clothing than me, so I thought it would be nice to pick a yarn that I wouldn't necessarily use myself, but which I would find fun to knit. And so I went for a very plain glove and then a slightly more exciting yarn. This is the Schoppel Voller Crazy Zauber Ball. I just look at these every time I'm on Wool Warehouse and I'm just fascinated by them. Like, they look so cool. The green and the orange. And this is one of the most neutral or like muted ones they have. They've got loads of bright colours too, as well as like monochrome ones. They're really cool. They have that cool look where like they're dyed and then the different colours applied together. I don't know very much about spinning yarn, um, but I know a lot of people like to use this as a cheaper substitute for the, what's it called? Spin cycle. It has quite a long colour change through it. This mohair is just drops. As usual, the colours will be in the description. These should be pretty quick to knit, I just need to spend a few evenings working on them I guess, at some point between now and mid-February, and I think they will turn out really nicely, and I think my sister will really enjoy them. I do think she would prefer something like this to a plain coloured cashmere for example. I think I actually asked her to pick a colour of this yarn, like she knows these gloves are coming for her birthday. Anyway, this transitions us very nicely onto yarn acquisitions. My first yarn acquisition is also for fingerless gloves. A lot of you guys really liked the gloves that I made for my mum for Christmas, I don't have them right here, um, but I showed them in a couple of other videos. They're cashmere fingerless gloves using the same cable or mock cable pattern as the socks that I just released a pattern for. I said I would make a pattern for the gloves, I also said that I didn't love how I constructed them the first time, so I need to knit another pair. Like, they will functionally be identical, it's just like where the beginning of round is and stuff that I want to change, and while I could probably figure out how I could do that and then just write the pattern out without knitting another pair up, I really would like to knit another pair up. Also I'd love another pair of more neutral cashmere gloves myself, because the last pair I knitted were a bright blue, and they're really pretty, but I'd like a neutral pair. So this time I'm using Lang Cashmere Premium. I use Cardiff Cashmere for the other pair, so this is me trying out a pretty equivalent um, cashmere yarn from a different brand so that I can recommend different yarn that might be more or less widely available in different places. It's colour number 23, which I thought was going to be a light grey, 
but it's really more of like a greyish white. Like if you know the drops white fog colour, I think this is quite similar to that. It's a lovely colour, I really like it a lot. This yarn does look really similar in sort of thickness to the Cardiff Cashmere Classic, so I think it would be perfect for these gloves. The yardage is pretty similar too. Petite Knit, I think as of me recording this, maybe yesterday, released the pattern for the Elizabeth blouse, I think it's called, which is like a polo neck. That's not the term, is it? Like polo neck is like turtleneck. I mean like a polo shirt, like it has a collar and then like double knitted bits going down that join here. That's such a bad description. It's a really beautiful collared long sleeve jumper shirt thing and her sample is knitted up in just straight cashmere. I think this is one of the recommended yarn options. Um, the card of cashmere I think is the one she actually used and it's beautiful and I really want it and I was trying to price it up and like for my size I think I would need 10 of these at about 15 pounds each so it would be like at 150 pound materials project. I think that would make it the most expensive project I would ever have done. I really want it, I just don't think I can justify that kind of cost. We will see. Anyway, if so, I think this colour would be not very practical, but so beautiful for a jump like that. It's such a lovely shade. This next one is like the epitome of yarn that I should not have bought because I don't have plans for it. But Nori yarn just gives me that FOMO sometimes. Like, everybody knows that one shade of Noro Silk Garden Sock Solo, shade number one, is called Omitama. I use it to make my sweater number 11, and it's a beautiful colour, but it's almost impossible to buy. Like, I haven't seen it in stock once since I bought the yarn to make that jumper a year and a half ago, maybe? Even longer ago than that? About a year and a half ago, I think. Anyway, they released a bunch more colours of the Noro Silk Garden Sock Solo. It's pretty hard to find in the UK, there's like one place really that stocks all of the colours, which is Laughing Hens. And I was really intrigued by this one colour. Um, they had three skeins left, so I bought all of them. I don't know how clearly you can see. It's a blue colour, but it has little colourful flecks in it. Colour number T89. It's a little bit vibrant maybe for my taste. I saw a Petit Knit Terrazzo sweater knitted up using this on Ravelry and it was held with a silk mohair and it looked just beautiful which is what prompted me to buy this. Each skein is 100 grams and 300 meters so with three of them 900 meters. The question is can I knit a jumper? The answer is probably but not comfortably. I think when I knitted sweater number 11, I just barely started the fourth skein actually, and that's a very oversized jumper. Because it's held with silk mohair, you can knit it on a pretty big needle. Um, this is, honestly, it's more like a DK weight, sport weight, DK weight kind of yarn, even though it is sock yarn. I mean, it has nylon in, so maybe that's why. But with the mohair, it knits up beautifully on a five millimeter needle. It's not transparent or anything. So I think my plan is to find a mohair that will make it look a little bit more muted and then I will try and get a whole jumper out of it because I think for my size that should be possible. Also it's single ply so I don't even like the look of single ply yarn knitted up on its own, like I just don't like the appearance of it. But mohair fixes all that for me so it will make it more durable and it would also sort of soften the single ply look so I think a nice mohair would be perfect. Something like Knitting for Olive Soft Blue would really help it become a little bit more muted and more the kind of colour that I wear a lot. Actually, I have some of that soft blue mohair over there, <laughs> ready for a different project. This is straight up my favourite colour that Knitting for Olive make. It is the perfect yarn colour. That's what it looks like in the merino, that's the silk mohair. I have it because I want to make a colour work jumper from it, and I've had it sitting here since the summer, and I still haven't cast it on. Um, but something like that, I think, would make this a little bit more muted. And because it's already kind of tweedy and it has a lot of colours in it, I don't think the colour difference would look um, too bad. So maybe I'll buy some more of this to hold with it. Ah, oh, that soft blue colour, it's just so perfect. Anyway, I did spend a lot of money on three skeins of Noro Silk Garden Sock Solo. That stuff is really expensive, so it is hard to justify without really a plan for what I want to do with it but I think it will be stunning and I just couldn't trust that I could find it again if I didn't buy it immediately. I know in like America or 
Canada or something, you probably have more shops where you can pick it up. But in the UK, it really is just stocked in large quantities by Laughing Hens. I think Lovecrafts don't sell it anymore. Wool Warehouse is a very limited selection. And then there are a few sort of smaller yarn shops like Beautiful Knitters, maybe Loop, that also have a couple of Nori yarn, but not a large selection. I have one final yarn acquisition. Bit of an odd one. I went to Newnham College Craft Society Knit Night. I do not go to Newnham College, but they had a knit night, and so I figured I'd just join in. I knew a few people there. Um, it was very nice. They have a lot of yarn that's been donated by well-known Cambridge knitters, one especially, I think, and other yarn they've just acquired from various places. And um, Roz was telling me about this particular ball of yarn, which was a Florence colour. It is certainly a Florence colour. This is Rowan Cashmere Haze, which I've seen around a lot, and I've never bought it because the name is just kind of weird to me. Like, it's called Cashmere Haze, and it's 30% cashmere. Kind of feel like it should be more than that. I have some, what is it called? The one from Cardiff Cashmere, Brush Light, which is very similar, like a silk core with cashmere through it, but that one is like just silk and cashmere, whereas this one is 40% alpaca. So I've been very skeptical of this and I've never wanted to spend the money on it because it is quite expensive, like more expensive than buying really nice silk mohair. I think it is a true lace weight though, so if you want an alternative to using mohair that is a true lace weight, because a lot of brushed alpaca silk tend to be at least more of a fingering weight sort of yarn or like equivalent to two strands of mohair, this really does feel very thin and it is um, pretty generous in the yardage. 230 meters for 25 grams, so about the same as mohair. It doesn't have nearly as much of a halo on it as the mohair, but <laughs> I felt a little bit bad for being like, Oh, I've never bought this yarn because I'm really skeptical of the fibre content and it feels kind of weird to spend that much money on something which is 30% cashmere. But this is really soft. Like, it feels so good. I don't think it's going to be sort of replacing mohair for me anytime soon because it is expensive and it doesn't give that halo that I love so much from mohair. I'm not especially sensitive to mohair or at least not anything like the Knitting for Olive or the Easier mohairs that I find to be very soft. But I have this one skein that Noonan Craftsalt gifted to me, and I don't know what to do with it. What do you do with one ball of, like, lace weight fluffy yarn? The thing is, I don't even want to hold it with regular fingering weight yarn, because I feel like that wouldn't do it justice. Like, it's so soft. I want to make something just with this yarn, but I also don't want to buy any more of it, because it is expensive. If you have any ideas, let me know. Anyway, I think that is about it. But I will be back again in a few weeks with another video. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.